Hey, are you ready for that big winter freeze? <laughs> oh, even though here at the beach it is cold, cold, cold here. And if you're in an RV, you know how cold it's gonna get. Now you know in your house, it's well insulated. Uh, you got a big nice heater, maybe a fireplace. You know it's gonna stay uh, snug as a bug in there. But in an RV, the walls are thinner, a lot of pipes exposed, and it's just not the, uh, it does not like home, and though you may enjoy RVing, but you gotta be ready for winter time. Now, you know, if you get a pipe to freeze in an RV, you know where it's gonna be? Yeah, it ain't gonna be where you can get to it. It's gonna be in the floor, behind a cabinet, maybe <laughs> maybe in between the walls somewhere, and it's not gonna be fun. And if you're a full-time RVer, well, the fun just stopped right there. So we're gonna show you how we, well, we prepared ours to get ready for uh, those frozen nights, those cold nights, it's got to be smart when you're going to RV in the wintertime, especially if you're a full-time RVer. Uh, if you're not going to, if you're not going to stay in an RV just all the time, uh, maybe the wintertime you can uh, you can antifreeze it, winterize it, and get it ready for spring. But if that's your home, if you're going to RV full-time. Maybe you ought to plan where you're going to RV for the winter. Up under that camper, there's no insulation. That plastic, uh, corrugated plastic under there, is not insulated. Uh, it's very thin. You got to watch where your pipes are. If you're going to uh, take up your water hose at night, or if you're going to wrap it with heat tape, uh, just you got to plan ahead. Uh, first thing, if I was going to be a full-time RVer, uh, come winter time, I'd be looking somewhere down south. Even though here a few weeks ago here at the beach, it got below freezing for several nights, so you really can't uh, you can't outrun it all the time. But you can be prepared for it. If you look up under some of the older campers, they're not set up for winter time. They got a lot of exposed water pipes. Uh, that core plastic that's under there is, you know, it's more for looks. There's no insulation there. So you always gotta be ready, ready, ready because it is cold, cold. So you wanna be prepared how you do uh, your winterization. I did a video last year and I wanna show you part of that, how we got our uh, water hose insulated. I did some heat tape on it. Uh, did a job on it too. We really, uh, we really had water all the way around. I can show you. Uh, uh, there's two or three ways you can do that. Take a look at this, and right at the end of it, I'll uh, I'll tell you a few other tricks that you can uh, you can do to stay prepared, even in the coldest nights. If you're full time and in your RV, or if you're just maybe wanting a little little vacation in the cold weather, <laughs> even here at the beach, <laughs> it's cold here today. Yes, it is. Okay, be right back. Take a look at this. Hey there again. Pat here, freezing to death here. We're making RV memories uh, for the first time in an RV in winter. It is cold, cold, cold. Uh, unlike typically when I'm at, uh, when we, we had a home, come October, November, maybe some, yeah, it's usually in November. Go ahead and winterize the RV in the house there for the winter. Hey, see you in April. Back out, drain the antifreeze, off we go. Now it's our, the RV's home, so I'm gonna do some winterizing today. Been lucky up till uh, up till now. It's January, so it's not been too bad. Uh, but the nights are going to get cold, and water. To, I don't want water to freeze in my water hose, and my double filters over there. Uh, you're going to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take them out of the system and uh, put in a smaller one. Wrap some heat tape, put some insulation on them, and then get back in and huddle around the fire. Now let's look over here. I'll show you what we're going to do to get all everything winterized. It's not going to be a hard job. No, not a hard job at all. I laid everything out on the tailgate so we can have some fun with it. There's my little Camco filter. Now, if you guys are just uh, weekend campers, maybe a couple of weeks in the summertime going to the mountains or down to the beach, one of these little filters is all you'll need there. It is a little 20 micron, so it's going to filter out anything that's going to come up and bite you. Uh, but if you're like us, we don't drink any of the water. We just shower and brush our teeth with it. So it'll filter out enough to, uh, to where you can, uh, you won't be out chasing cars and barking. You'll be good. A little short uh, no kink hose that'll connect to your camper is a piece of junk. I'll tell you why later. Uh, so we'll move on to that. Heat tape. This <laughs> this heat tape's pretty uh, pretty easy there. It's got the little thermostat on the end that'll connect to the hose. Turns the heat tape on when it gets below 37. When temperature gets up to 45, the heat tape will cut itself off. So that's pretty good. There's the insulation wrap I'll put around the hose when it's all wrapped and done. And I had to see how flexible it was. I think I whopped Glenn a few times and a few workers there in the hardware store before I left. Uh, I had to make sure it worked. But everything laid out, so it's gonna be a, this'll be an easy, 
and easy put it uh, put together there. Now the little uh, the little short no kink hose that uh, that are supposed to hook up to your uh, campsite water outlet. I uh, got it uh, before I knew better. Went ahead and put it into the filter there. Uh, got it to where it's not going to leak. Got a little air there to show you the water goes that way, <laughs> and that's headed toward the RV. So that's pretty simple to put on there. Uh, 20 microns are going to, like I say, it's going to filter out everything you'll need. I've used the double filter that you've seen us build. I uh, used the sediment and the charcoal filter in the double, but using this for the winter, I wanted to go to a smaller filter because I wanted my insulation to go around it so it'll be, uh, uh, won't freeze up on me. And you see the hose goes round and round. That end there goes up into the water box, and I put me a piece of tape there to sort of mark that is the edge of the cap in my water box of the RV. I'll run the heat tape right up to the edge of the tape, then the top half of the hose will be up in the water box, and it is heated from the heater, so we're good. Not going to be a problem at all. So when we get down to the insulation, I got it all put on. The heat tape is already on. Got the insulation on half of the hose, so we're ready, uh, ready to go to the backside and uh, get this baby put on. And then around here we go. I'll show you what we uh, what we've had for a setup here and uh, What I'm going to take out what I'm going to put in and how we're going to change it and get this heat tape set in there to where we can stay nice and comfy and warm and uh, We'll always have water when uh, when it gets down uh, uh, below freezing that way we uh, Can stay warm here. Let's get going and we all want to stay warm There's the campground outlet and they've got a thermocouple there to keep the water from freezing underground I got to worry about it free, freezing from there to the RV. There's my little setup uh, before I took it over to get it wrapped. Uh, and there's my double water filter setup. I did a video on that if you want to go back and take a look at how we did it. Got a charcoal filter and a sediment filter there in my, uh, in my filter system. The hose goes right up in the bottom of the RV. Comes right out. And I'll tell you about that little homemade cap here in a minute. Goes right down through that humongous hole that's only built for a water hose. Uh, now that little water compartment there we call the water bay and it is heated uh, the basement of the camper is heated when I'm running the uh, floor, uh, floor furnace so it, residual heat will go into the water box to keep anything from freezing up uh, I got a little uh, little piece of paper there it's actually an ad for CNN hopefully it's a picture of Anderson Cooper I shove it down in there to keep any kind of rodents and creatures from crawling up through there and we'll get it all hooked up you can see the uh, there's the water box there and the vent there where the uh, residual heat will come into the uh, water box and sort of keep everything from getting all froze up. Down into the bottom there where we'll run the hot water hose down, I'll run my insulation right up to the bottom of that cap. Now keep in mind, I want to show you about that water bay and the uh, water filter system there. Now here it is before I take it around to get it all wrapped up. Uh, short enough to uh, reach right over there, but uh, not too long that I had to worry about a lot of heat tape. There's my adjustable water uh, fill, uh, pressure regulator. I'll usually keep it at around, I got the water off now, set it at around 55 PSI. But there's half of the insulation on the hose. My heat tape is ran. It is ready to, uh, I got my, my thermostat set right on the uh, uh, pressure regulator there and that'll give a good temperature. We got our plugged in, all systems go, and we're ready to heat the hose up. Now eventually we'll take that Y connector out of the system uh, really don't need it in there. Not going to be using an auxiliary hose uh, here in the depth of winter. Uh, there's the. Uh, I took that out. I called it a piece of junk because after I got it in, of course, I didn't need it to start with, and it leaked like a sieve between the hose and the brass connector there, and that was a little bit aggravating. But I didn't need it anyway. You probably won't need it anyway because you'll probably put that filter right up to the campground outlet too. Uh, so that'll work there. So the setup there, and I am going to take that uh, Y connector out of there, and I, I am going to flip up my gauge and get it sort of flipped up on the top side, make it a little easier to uh, to read and, and, and keep a hold of. I did get the top side insulated there. That'll be inside, even though it is going to be heated. I did want to get some insulation there. I got everything wrapped. That is beautiful. Neighbors from all around is going to come by to see our hose. How amazing it's going to look, and we're going to have uh, warm water in the mornings. Not gonna be froze up. <laughs> that was the that was the whole case of the whole deal. Love. Ooh. I'm gonna let you know we just did get our heat tape put on just in time. We are under a snow advisory, snow warning, snow watch. We're under snow here, freezing rain, sleet, and I'm like a weatherman standing right out in the middle of it, telling you all about it. Well, let me show you. We just did get it 
We just did get it put on just in time because it is cold, cold, and I mean cold here. Snow, you got a couple inches of snow with freezing rain and sleet right on top of it. I'll show you. My setup here has survived. We did good. We had water this morning and everything is good. So with that in mind, again, thanks for watching the video. Well, that's how we did ours. It wasn't hard. Uh, the heat tape was uh, was easy to do. You can either do the heat tape. A lot of if it's just going to be a one or two night freezer, a lot of guys will just go out and take up their water hose, roll it up, and put it inside for the night. Uh, I always uh, I always am a firm believer. A lot of people don't. I'm a firm believer of using the bridge under my sewer hose. So I've got a uh, an angle that my water will drain down. Uh, usually running water don't uh, won't freeze up especially in your sewer hose if you've got a good angle to it if it's laying on the ground and you've got a little bit of hump up into the sewer drain yep you're gonna freeze up right there so I like uh, I like to use my sewer my sewer bridge to drain uh, down at an angle <sighs> some nights you might want to leave a little bit of water dripping if you're hooked up and I, I really I'm really not a very much of a firm believer on boondocking in the wintertime because uh, I like to know I'm on a campground where I've got the power hookup and we can run some heaters, uh, auxiliary heaters. We run our fireplace. Our uh, Hillbilly Hilton had a heat pump uh, in the uh, one of the ACs and we had a electric heater in the bedroom. So we stayed, stayed sm uh, snug as a bug in it. Uh, <laughs> it's still cold here. But there's two or three things you can do to, to uh, prepare for cold weather. It's, uh, it's always a blast to be RV in the, in the winter time nothing like fred and I'm, I'm just I'm, maybe i'm just getting too old it's, this cold weather goes right to my bones Whew. yeah pets you're not a spring chicken anymore uh, but it is cold 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 uh, if you're going to rv in the cold weather just be prepared take a few uh, a few precautions and you'll have a blast with it nothing like staying uh, snug as a bug in your rv and looking out the window and seeing it's uh, it's winter time and spring's right around the corner Hey, we're uh, glad you watched with us. If you haven't subscribed with us, hey, I jumped over that 500 mark. Woohoo! I hope you were one of them. If not, hit that little subscription button there. It's free to do. Be glad to have you follow along with us. Uh, we're having a blast doing some of these videos and having you along with you. Hit the like button right there. Uh, YouTube likes to see that, and boy, I do too. If you leave me a comment, I'll comment back to you. I'll leave, uh, I'll leave a comment for everybody that comes along. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. As me and Glenna will always tell you, God bless you, everyone.